It's time for the mic drop. I and each show going deep on one topic affecting our community in hopes we can all learn a little more. Like many of you, learning about the death of sports journalist Grant Wall Sunday morning left me reeling, stunned and sad because I've been keeping up with his reporting from the World Cup. Felt like I had just spoken with him a couple of days before and that I'd soon be hearing from him again. And I was looking very forward to it. Not because of the soccer breakdowns, which were excellent because Grant is, was one of the premier soccer journalists, but because it was coming from him, a man who was more than just a journalist. And hearing that on Friday as I did cast a pall over the semis and the quarters that I enjoyed over the weekend. Now, while I didn't know Grant personally, I did know him professionally. And when we crossed paths from time to time, I found him to be gracious, warm, giving, and funny, which is something I'm obviously drawn to. And by the way, I'm not the only one. I'm willing to bet that you won't be able to find anybody from our world who has an unkind word to say about him. He was we, what we like to call a real one, a writer who used sports to highlight humanity and bring to light any injustice against humanity. I first became aware of the depth of his talent through his Sports Illustrated piece on the then high school phenom LeBron James. It was his cover story, The Chosen One, that introduced LeBron to the world. If you get a chance to go back and reread it, it is a fantastic piece. Now, he could have stayed in the world of basketball with LeBron and them and would have surely done great work. But he set his sights on the beautiful game, taking his talents to the world of soccer, working to elevate the game and his players in the States through his coverage of both the men and women's side of the ball. And it was there that he made his mark, taking on soccer's longstanding and some would say corrupt establishment, I would say. He even ran to be FIFA president on the promise of ending the corruption. He lost, of course, but I'm sure with a smile on his face, but he was dogged in his pursuit of ending injustice in the game, which is, by the way, why he wore a rainbow shirt to the U.S. team's first World Cup match to shed light on the oppressive atmosphere members of the LGBTQIA community are facing in Qatar. He was detained and removed the shirt, but the story was told, and that's what's important, that the story be told, which is what he was doing when he wrote, they just don't care. Qatari World Cup organizers don't even hide their apathy over migrant worker deaths, including the most recent one. That was a blog post a day before his death, highlighting the apathy shown by executives of the World Cup following the death of a migrant worker last week. It's moves like this that highlight another side of Grant I failed to mention earlier. He was also brave. The details of his passing are still being sorted out. He claimed to be suffering from bronchitis before collapsing in the press box. A victim of overwork, maybe? As of yet, we don't know. Hopefully, especially for his dear wife's sake, some sense of the cause of death can be made. But until that happens, let's try and focus on the memories of the good man we've all lost.